Okay, this talk is going to be about the alternating series theorem. So the alternating series theorem gives certain conditions under which certain kinds of series uh, converge. So it really says if a series satisfies these three conditions, one, two, and three, then it converges. So the first condition is alternating signs. So the alternating signs condition says that all the AKs are non-zero and any two adjacent terms have opposite sign. So if one is positive, the other is negative. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the second condition says monotonically decreasing in magnitude. Okay. What this says is that if uh, uh, if you take any k, then the magnitude of a k is greater than equal or equal to the magnitude of a k plus one. Okay. So the size of the terms are going down. They may remain equal for a while, but they uh, they definitely don't go up anywhere. Okay. And the final thing is that the terms approach zero. So the limit as k approaches infinity of a k is zero, which is the same as saying that the limit of the absolute values is zero, right? Because absolute value is going to zero is the same as saying that things go to zero. Okay. Uh, so I could put the absolute value or I could uh, choose not to put it. So if all these three conditions are satisfied, then the series converges. Now all conditions are important. So uh, if I had alternating signs, but the magnitudes were not monotonically decreasing, I will not be able to conclude that the series must converge. It may still converge by chance, but I wouldn't be able to use this theorem. Okay. Uh, similarly, if, if the one and two hold, but the third one doesn't, so the terms are not going to zero, then, uh, then again, I will not be able to conclude that the series converges. Okay. So in order to understand this theorem and the proof, I'm going to state an actually a more concrete version. I'm going to assume that the first term is positive. So once the first term is positive, the second term is negative, then the third term is positive, the fourth term is negative, and so on. So there's alternation of sign. Okay. So now what I'm claiming is that the odd partial sum, so the partial sums of the first few terms. Wait, I just have to say half. Okay, uh, and so the odd partial sums are partial sums like this. Okay, and the, the claim is, so I'm assuming that A1 is uh, positive, A2 is negative and so on. So this, this is how the sign alternation goes. And I'm also assuming they're monotonically decreasing in magnitude. And I'm assuming the terms go to zero. The first thing I claim is that the partial sums for the odd things, so these partial sums, they form a monotonically decreasing sequence. So the these this, these are going down in value, and uh, and it's bounded from below, and it therefore has a limit. Then the next claim is that the partial sums for the even number partial sums they form a monotonically increasing sequence, and it's bounded from above. Hence has a limit, and finally I'm going to claim that both limits are equal. Okay, so the even things are like a1 plus a2, a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4, and so on. Okay, so what do you think the idea is going to be? Well, we start with the number line, and uh, remember what the infinite sum. What's the infinite sum? It's the limit of the partial sums, right? And how do I pictorially think of the partial sum? I start at 0, I move a1, then I move a2, so I get to a1 plus a2, then I move a3, I get to a1 plus a2 plus a3, and so on. Okay? Okay? Now, from this information, what can I conclude? From the given information. So, alternating signs, what does that mean? I'm going to move forward, then backward, then forward, then backward, then forward, then backward, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what alternating signs means. It's going to be like that, that, that. Now, that's what alternating signs would mean, but also you have monotonically decreasing in magnitude. What does that mean? So can, I, can this type of situation happen? No. No? Mm -hmm. Right? It cannot go back more than it went forward, right? Yeah. So in fact, uh, if I'm looking at the odd degree terms, as I get to a1, then I do a1 plus a2. 
now I do a1 plus a2 plus a3, then I'm going back, but I cannot overshoot a1, right? Mm -hmm. So each time I, ha I have to stay within the sort of less than or equal to the previous one. So the odd degree partial sums will remain, uh, will be, so you see this, the odd degree partial sums will be monotonically decreasing because each time I go up, down, up, down, up, each time I go down and then up, I cannot go back all the way or I definitely cannot overshoot, right? Okay. Maybe I go back all the way if there's equality, but I definitely cannot overshoot. So therefore, uh, it's monotonically decreasing. By the way, when I say monotonically decreasing, I'm allowing them to sometimes remain equal for a while before going down again. Mm -hmm. okay. So, and why is it bounded from below? So why are all these things partial sums bounded from below? What are they bounded from below by? By... All the even ones, right? Mm -hmm. So all the even ones actually will bound all the odd ones from below. Okay. Right. So you have go to a1, then you're going to a1 plus a2, then a1 plus a2 plus a3, then a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4. Every even one is less than, every even partial sum is less than uh, every odd partial sum, right? Mm -hmm. Well, equality won't, well, equality won't occur here because they're all uh, non-zero terms, right? So in fact, so, so these, so all of these are, these are, the odd ones are decreasing and bounded from below, monotonically decreasing. So they could remain constant for a while, but they're bound from below and therefore they have a limit. Okay. So if you're monotonically decreasing thing bound from below, it has a limit. It's equal to the GLB. And this is monotonically increasing, bounded from above by all the odd ones. And so these have a limit, the even number thing. The even number ones are going up, the odd number ones are going down. And both have limits because they're bounded by each other. So what's the final thing we want to show? Both limits are equal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why are both limits equal? So what we what we have is we have this type of situation, right? You have your You have this type of situation. I'm claiming the even ones which are going up and the odd ones which are going down, they're actually sort of approaching the same thing. Why is that the case? Uh, well, well, one is coming from above. Yeah, the even ones are all less than all the odd ones. Mm -hmm. So the limit for the even ones is less than or equal to the limit for the odd ones. But how do you know they're exactly equal? What, we haven't yet used one of the three conditions, right? Terms approach zero. Terms approach zero. So because the terms approach zero, each time the amount you can oscillate is is becoming smaller and smaller, right? The amount you can, and that amount by which you can oscillate between the even and the odd ones, that's approaching zero. Yeah. Okay, and that's why the limit for the odd ones and for the even ones are actually the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so that's essentially the proof. And of course, now if I if the first term was negative, then then the odd even role would get interchanged when I write this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, uh, now, now I want to say something that all these conditions are important. So one can make counter examples for each of these conditions being violated. That I'll say that in a in a separate video.